What is going on my friends? Hank here from Sprues and Brews and today we are going to keep cracking on our brand new 135 scale M18 Hellcat from Tamiya. Now if you haven't seen my last video where we do the full build process for this kit, make sure you check that one out first. I'll leave a link in the description below because today we are going to focus on the painting, decaling, and weathering processes for this kit. I mentioned in the last video that I think this is a definite contender for kit of the year, but I'll let you guys make up your own mind on that one. So, you know the drill by now. Grab yourself a beverage, get cozy, let's check it out. All right guys, so here is the finished build of our M18 Hellcat. I've got some aftermarket resin stowage on here from Value Gear and an aluminum barrel from Def Model. As I mentioned in the intro, if you wanna check out the full build video for this kit, I will leave a link to that right here. But in the meantime, let's get into painting. We're gonna start as we usually do with a full primer coat of Vallejo matte varnish. Um, we're gonna spray this to the entire vehicle, being really careful to get into all the little nooks and crannies in the fighting compartment there. We're gonna do the same thing on the turret as well. And here is our kit all primed up. I love the all black look like this. They always look so nice. This is also a good step because it helps point out any imperfections you have in the build, any extra bits of flash you have to clean up, but we're looking pretty good here, so it'll be time to move on to the actual painting. Alrighty, so to start off with the actual painting process, we're gonna spray the interior of the fighting compartment, more specifically the floor of the fighting compartment here, with some Amal MIG Crema Vice. This is actually a color specifically designed for German tank interiors, but it works perfectly for this purpose as well. No need to be too fancy here, we just wanna make sure we can get all of the visible areas, and then we'll move on to our base coat of all drab. Before we do that, I'm just gonna cover up the interior there with a bit of tissue paper. And then for our base coat here, I'm using Ammo MIG Light Olive Drab Base for this. I wanted to make this vehicle a little lighter than I usually do. I think um, sometimes American vehicles can have a tendency to be a little too dark. And this is all gonna get knocked down a bit when we get to the weathering stage. So I decided to use the light olive drab base today. And we're just gonna very carefully spray this on. The only tricky part of this paint job was with the running gear. As I kind of went into detail in the first video of this series, I decided to build the running gear attached to this vehicle, unlike I usually do. I usually like to leave the tracks off because it makes painting a little easier. But with this Lincoln length assembly, it was a little bit more straightforward to just put them right on there and then paint in place. Just have to be really careful and have a really tight nozzle spread. Um, and we're gonna just paint the inside of those road wheels and try and get some of the lower hull. Not too bad, you just gotta go slow and take your time. But all in all, I really like this light olive drab base. I think it looks really good. Next, we are gonna mask off the canvas cover portion for the, the gun mallet here with a little Tamiya masking tape. And then we're just gonna spray that in using some uh, Ammo Mig Dunkelgeld. I know it's technically a German color again, but it works pretty well for this light khaki color. And I wanted to kind of differentiate from some of the traditional US khaki that we're gonna use on this stowage later. So this worked out pretty well. Once that's sprayed on there, we can just pop off our simple masks and we can move on with the paint job. All right, now it is time to move into the very tedious phase of hand painting all of our stowage here. I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail with all the colors that I use for this, but the really important thing to remember is just try and use natural tones. Look at reference photos if you can, uh, both actual period reference photos and photos of reenactors nowadays, um, just to kind of get a vibe of what these colors will be. I will provide links in the description below for some of the paints that I like to use. Um, and I'll obviously flash on screen some of the specifics that I'm using here, but just kind of go with your gut with uh, the colors that you think are gonna make sense for this time period and for this overall color scheme that you're using and just try and vary it up as you go. We don't wanna have all of our stowage in the exact same color. Um, just be conscious of what's sitting next to each other on the build and enjoy yourself. For these khaki packs, I like to use a little bit of highlighting on here. I'm just using a German camo beige to pull out some of the raised parts of these bags. I don't do a ton of highlighting with my stowage on vehicles like this just because there's so much of it and I don't really want to get into that much detail. We're going to add a little bit of 
artificial shadow with our weathering later. But for these, I just like to break up um, some of the depth on these khaki packs because there are so many of them. One of my little signatures, I guess you could call it, is this, this red leather here. Um, on these resin stowage packs from Value Gear, the straps are a little thicker than the straps that I make using, uh, to me, a masking tape. So I like to envision those as kind of like leather straps. They have a little more bulk to them. And I think they look awesome um, next to all of Drab here. So I like to use that red leather color from Vallejo to really make those thicker straps pop. Next, we're gonna come in with a little white aluminum from Vallejo. And we're just gonna gently touch this to each of the buckles on our stowage, just to kind of make those pop. It's probably not super authentic that these would be that shiny, but Again, we're gonna dull it down in the weathering phase later, but I just think it's a nice little contrast there. For your pioneering tools, we can really use any natural wood tone that you like. I like to go a little lighter on these generally because they're gonna get knocked down again with the weathering later in the process here. Um, and I mix it up sometimes, but for this build, I went with all this same you know, light deck tan color. After that, I'm just gonna follow it up and paint in the metal parts of the pioneering tools with just a ammo flat black. I don't have a great um, steel color and I think this works pretty well. Moving on to our big uh, chunk of stowage on the back of the hull here. I'm just going to start by painting in some of the wooden crates and we're going to go around as we've been doing on the rest of the build, painting in all these pieces individually with the colors that make sense uh, for these individual bits of stowage. The name of the game here is to try and break up the colors. We don't want too much of the same right next to each other. Now is a good time to stop and come back and paint the ammo racks inside the fighting compartment here. These are barely going to be visible once the turret is on, so we're just going to get a little bit of color in there. We're going to hit those with some gold leaf from Tamiya, and we're going to do the same thing with the ready rack in the turret there. Just to add a little bit of detail, we're going to do some dry brushing with our Vallejo white aluminum on the floor of the fighting compartment. This is that anti-slip, you know, not corrugated steel, I'm not sure what the actual phrase is, but um, we're going to try and make that pop a little bit. That'll get dulled down in the weathering process, but I think it's a nice touch there. We're going to repeat a lot of what we've done with our stowage painting up on the turret here. One thing to note, just be careful if you are using this value gear stowage, um, the actual stowage rack is molded into this piece here, so we're just going to paint around that. We want to make sure we don't paint the actual bars of the stowage rack. Here's our first side all completed. This took me about an hour all in all. It's slow, steady process, but it's pretty relaxing, so don't rush, take your time, enjoy yourself. It's a blast. That's why we do this hobby, right? I didn't film the painting of the second half here, but same process here, so now we've got both sides of our stowage on the turret all set. The last thing we have to do is come in with a little flat black and we're just gonna paint in that spare track link on the back of the turret. Next, we're gonna take a little olive drab and we're just gonna hand paint in the mounting brackets for this canvas mantlet cover. Um, these were oversprayed with the Dunkel Gelb when we sprayed, airbrushed in that canvas cover. So we're just gonna fix those now. We're also gonna go back and hand paint the site that's popping out from beneath the canvas cover. That is all drab as well. So that is the majority of our hand painting here. Um, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think there's a ton of detail and a ton of things for you to look at on this kit. It's super busy, but I love that on a tank. It's super authentic. If you look at reference photos, this is what these, um, well, tanks and tank destroyers actually look like in the field. So moving on to weathering, we're gonna spray the entire vehicle with a gloss coat of AK Interactive Gauzy Agent. That is gonna protect our work and give us a nice gloss surface for decals and weathering. Now, the two marking options that come with this Tamiya kit are both for vehicles on the Italian front but I purposely kept this really vague. I just put on a few of the basic national markings and some serial numbers on the side of the hull here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this vehicle. I might work it into a diorama, and I wanted to leave the options open to make it look like a vehicle from the um, you know, Northern and Central European theater as well. So kind of left that up in the air. Um, I like to usually go specific on my, my vehicle markings, but left this one kind of vague in late today, but no worries here. 
As usual with the Mia decals, they're easy to work with, but they're pretty thick, and I had a little bit of silver in trouble, as you might see in the, the final shots of this build. Um, you know, that's just one of the things you have to deal with with Tamiya kits. Not the best decals in the world. You can see here, I had a little cracking on the top turret decal, so I just painted up a little M1 carbine real quick and threw that over the crack. Clever thinking in the end, you know? You just gotta roll with the punches and make it work. I think it added a little character though, so I like it up there. My basic weathering style is kind of a mix of a pin wash and a sludge wash. Um, for something like this, I like to start with some Ammo MIG um, dark wash and just apply that around all the raised and recessed points of the vehicle. And then just come back in with some enamel oilless thinner and just kind of wash that around to make sure it gets into all the little nooks and crannies. This is just how I start because I think it adds a really nice artificial shadow, helps pop all your details, and gives us a really good base to continue weathering if we want to do so. For this particular build, I'm going to keep things pretty simple. We're just going to do this and then we're going to do a little oil dot filtering later which we'll get into, um, but I think this is a great place to start for any armor build, just a basic little wash like this. We're gonna continue around the vehicle and apply this to all the sides and the top of the hull, as well as the turret. On the stowage bits themselves, I like to go a little heavier on the wash. Again, we can pull most of this off with some enamel odorless thinner and just leave behind a little bit of the actual wash in the deepest nooks and crannies just to kind of pop those shadows on these really nice molds from Value Gear. Um, I go a little heavier on the stowage, like I said, than I do on the actual vehicle, but we can always pull off as much as we want. At this point, we're gonna do a little pin wash inside the turret as well, just to make sure we pop all those details in there. It's easy enough to get in with a nice narrow brush, so no sweat there at all. All right, so here's our vehicle with the finished pin wash. And once that is all dry, we are gonna move on to some oil dot filtering. I'm just using basic artist oils. I picked these up on Amazon. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. We're just gonna use three colors here. This first one is like a burnt umber yellowish color. We're just gonna go along all of the vertical surfaces of the tank destroyer. Just put some little dots on here, which we're gonna come back and streak later. I've got a nice rich green oil here as well. Um, this is just gonna help break up some of that base olive drab tone for our vehicle. Um, you'll see how it all comes together once we start streaking. And then we're gonna finish up with our third oil dot. This is just a, a deep brown. We're gonna take this really nifty sawtooth brush. This is from Ammo MIG. Dip it in some enamel odorless thinner, get most of it off the brush, and then we're gonna do some gentle streaking here. Um, just in a downward motion following gravity. You want to make sure you're following gravity and this is going to kind of replicate um, Like dry dust and rain streaking on the side of the vehicle It's kind of hard to see on camera, but when it's in person This is like a beautiful subtle touch on your armor vehicles Once that is complete and everything is dry, super important to let everything fully dry, sometimes it takes an overnight, we're gonna spray the whole vehicle with a coat of Ammo MIG Lucky Matte Varnish that's gonna knock down the shine from our gloss coat and we're gonna finish up here with just a few things left. We're gonna pop on the Mod Deuce uh, MG that I painted separately here 
Excuse my hair getting in the way, sorry. Once that is in position, the last thing we have to do is just do a little bit of weathering on the running gear. I am super sparse when it comes to weathering most of the time here, because again, I don't know what situation I'm gonna put this in. I might put it in a diorama later. So I just took a few different pigments here. These are all from Ammo Mig. I've got some dark earth, some European earth, and I think a little winter soil. Um, and we're just gonna literally dust this on the, all around the running gear, on the track, um, on the road wheels, on the lower part of the hull. No uh, binding agent here. We're just gonna put it on there. And then we're gonna come back with a soft bristle brush and just knock it all off. Um, I know that sounds super, super simple, and that's because it is. And when you think about it, if a vehicle is driving around in a dusty, dirty environment, it's just going to kick up dust and it's going to just stick to the sides of the vehicle. There's nothing really binding it on there if it's not driving through wet water and mud and stuff. Um, and I think this is a really great way to get a super realistic look. So again, just get some pigments, brush them on there. Uh, the name of the game is to use variation, use a few different pigments because dirt doesn't all look the same. Um, get it on there and then just knock as much of it off as you can. It's going to give you a really nice authentic look. And that is going to do it for the painting, decaling, and weathering process for this brand new 135 scale Tamiya M18 Hellcat. As I mentioned in the first video, absolutely love this build, love the whole process, great project all around. Tamiya knocked it out of the park with this one again, definite front runner for kit of the year. And I'd be really curious to hear what you guys think about it. So if you pick one of these up and you build it and you use any of these tips, please come back, leave a comment below. I'd be really curious to hear how it went for you guys and if you enjoyed this build as much as I did. Um, and if you're looking for some more inspiration, some more tips and tricks, I've got a whole bunch of videos over on my channel kind of going through my techniques for building, painting, and weathering armor models. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to do so. And if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit that like button. So until next time, my friends, be well, happy building, cheers.